Duke Slater. Are you familiar with all of his story, or is there anything you know about Duke Slater? Um, I've, I've, I don't know too much about him, but I, I just see his uh, cleats in the indoor. Do you know much about him or his story? Um, as an Iowa fan, growing up as an Iowa fan, uh, I really don't know his story that, that, that much. Um, I, the first I've really heard of him was actually here um, with the coaches and stuff, so um, that, was, that was kind of my first um, time hearing his name um, and, and his story. What do you know about Duke Slater? Are you aware of who he is and what kind of to the program? Uh, a little bit. Not too much information, though. But um, I guess I got to look more into it. Tonight, it's the Hawkeyes and the Minnesota Golden Gophers squaring off in this pandemic-abbreviated season here at TCF Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Our goal is to play our best football. It doesn't change our best football, all right? We play hard, we play tough, and we play together as a team. Hard, tough, every snap, and we're together out there. All right, let's go. Let's go! Here come the Gophers onto the field. We await for the swarm. The Hawks now coming out of the tunnel here at TCF Bank Stadium. Both teams are one and two. They come off impressive wins a week ago. The Heartland is brought to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Second possession of the night begins at their own 36. They're going to run Goodson off the left edge, gets the corner turned. He gets to the second level, across midfield, tackled. In Minnesota territory, let's see if they spot him at the 48-yard line. Big gain on first down. Empty backfield. Spencer over the middle, comes to the underneath man. Goodson, another first down as he burrows his way across the 40. That's a gain of 12 more, another first down. Hawks really good on first down. Here's Mackay Sargent. He pinballs off one defender, gets the first down inside the Minnesota 25, off the left side. So it's first and 10 at the Minnesota 11. The Hawks trying to get on the scoreboard first. Now they come the other way to Tracy. Great move, five-yard line down to the two and tackled there. Man, oh man, what a move he put on the corner. Isn't his nickname Sweet Feet? Oh, they run the quick jet fly sweep. Touchdown, Iowa. Nico Regani. A full head of steam. How about that handoff by Petrus? Put it right on his belly button, and all Nico had to do was turn the corner, and his momentum took him into the One end zone. One of those plays that you have to practice a lot to get it right because of timing. Iowa 7, Minnesota nothing. 5.42 to play in the first quarter. Good job! Keep it up! Oh, let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! They're going to bring Joe Evans off the left side. Morgan's pass is deflected up in the air, nearly intercepted. Hawks go with tight end and two backs out of the eye. Good hole off the left side. Goodson has got room, slides to the outside, crosses the 25 to the 28-yard line. 12.38 to go first half. Here come the Hawks running to the short side. Goodson hops through a hole, almost breaks an ankle tackle. Hawks trying to plow downfield and add to a 7-0 lead on the Gophers. They're going to run Makai Sargent off the right edge. He gets off right tackle and gets the first down inside the 25. Tyrone Tracy to the left. They snap it to Goodson. Big hole. Touchdown, Iowa. Touchdown, Iowa. What blocking. Pick a spot. Right side, left side, middle. And Tyler Goodson doing what Papa Bear, Papa Ferentz wants him to do. What a gigantic gaping hole on the left side. And the Wildcat again. And that, that is turning into something very, very effective. Three receivers for the Gophers. Second down and four. Fake to Ibrahim over the middle. Incomplete pass. Picked off. I think it's Kerner. Kerner has the ball. And the Hawks are back in business at the Minnesota 25. That ball was well overthrown, at least I think of the intended target. Otherwise, he shouldn't have thrown the football. Oh, yeah, it was, it was overthrown. It got away from him, and Kerner just happened to be right in the right area. 
Iowa 14 and Minnesota nothing. The Heartland is brought to you by High V, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. High V proudly supports the Iowa Hawkeyes. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. Zero, zero. Let's go and win the football game. Play hard as hell, tough as hell, and play as a team. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Minnesota will get the ball. Here's the run up by Shudek. Here's Tanner Morgan on third down. Out of the pistol, one running back, three receivers wide side, one receiver to the short side, and Morgan runs away from Van Valkenburg's pressure. Now he stumbles, falls to the ground at the 18 as he was about ready to be flattened. Pancake by Davion Nixon. Here comes the punt by Torrey Taylor. <laughs> Look at this thing. Drilled, hits at the five, goes straight sideways, out of bounds at the four. <laughs> Unbelievable. Here's the snap. He gets the, nope, this time they fake it, and sacked. And it's Jack Campbell. He was one of the Hawkeyes in there. As down goes Morgan. He and Van Valkenburg. Here comes, no, again, the same play. They fake the handoff, and in open spaces, Rashad Bateman. He's running downfield for a first down across the 30. Third down and a long five. And they snap the ball directly to the tailback, Ibrahim. At least I think they did, and he gets thrown for a three-yard loss. That play looked like it was... Uh, Botch from the start. Here's a big hole off the right side. Goodson still running. He's at midfield. He's in Minnesota territory at the 45. Spins for 10 more to the Minnesota 35-yard line on first and 10 from the Iowa 20. Hey, did we say it's time for that big offensive line to take over? Well, and we know they're refreshed. That's, that's, that's exactly right. I, mean, I hope they just weren't too cold. Petrus turns, fakes the handoff, throws over the middle. It is caught. Caught in motion and running inside the 10. Welcome back, Tyrone Tracy. We want a touchdown. Two tight ends. They go heavy package. Pulls out to his right. Throws it to Amir Smith. He's all alone in the corner of the end zone. Right in front of the pylon. Makes the grab. Missed assignment by the secondary. And it's a touchdown, Iowa. Amir smith Marset. And here it comes. Fake the draw handoff, back to pass. He's looking to the end zone. Fires it out. Pattern is picked up, intercepted, and going the other way is Riley Moss. Riley Moss is down the far sideline. 50, 45, 40, 35 yard line of Minnesota. Riley Moss pulls the rabbit out of the hat again. Oh, that throw, the quarterback had plenty of time. And when he threw it out, Moss was just baiting the throw. Oh, they're gonna throw for it, and they got a man behind the defender. It's caught at the 10. Petrus on a play fake, threw it inside the 10. Hawks need a yard for a touchdown and a four-score lead. Here comes Goodson off the right edge. He's over the goal line. That's a touchdown, Iowa. Touchdown, Iowa, with 8.56 to go in the game. And Floyd doesn't have much, many teeth left after 85 years, but he is gumming a smile down there now. But ah! The Hawks are going for two, and even that play works. Iowa. Tyler Goodson runs off the left edge for a two-point conversion. Tanner on second down, 10. Tanner Morgan. Oh, good stunt by Evans. Forces him outside. He's grabbed and sacked by Van Valkenburg. What a one-two combo Evans and Van Valkenburg are turning out to be. Alex Mackay Padilla. Sar no, Mackay Sargent off the edge, turns the corner. He's running toward the gopher end zone, all the way down inside the 15-yard line from midfield. The Hawks are first and 10. Look at this hole, down the middle of the field, across the goal line, another touchdown, Iowa, and the route is on. Hey, nice job. Hey, nice job. Nice job. Good win. Hell of a job today. Uh, we're growing as a football team. That's the most important thing right now. We're making strides, we're growing. Two weeks in a row, still a lot of things we can still get better at, and we will, as long as everybody's attitude, 
stays like it has been the last couple weeks here, right? Today's broadcast is powered by Extreme Internet. Feel the speed. Feel the power. Feel extreme. U.S. Cellular is proud to be the official wireless sponsor of the Iowa Hawkeyes. U.S. Cellular, connecting Hawkeye Nation. 1921, the team that brought Iowa national honors. It was a team of greats. The Divines, Locke, Duke Slater, Shuttleworth. Well, Duke Slater is important. Uh, first of all, he's the first uh, black All-American in Iowa football history. Actually, uh, he was an All-American for the first time as a sophomore, second team, and then as a senior, 1921, he was first team All-American. And then it was also the uh, first African-American in the uh, College Football Hall of Fame. So he's a pretty significant man. He was way ahead of his time, in my view. Uh, 1921, as an example, they were 7-0, claimed the mythical national championship. Uh, Duke Slater uh, became the first African-American first-team All-American uh, that year. He was uh, not only a smart human being, but he could play multiple positions. He outthought the opposition. Uh, in his three years at Iowa, the Hawks went 23-6-1. That year you speak of, uh, they uh, won the Big Ten Championship, clearly at 7-0, uh, but they, they dominated teams. So Duke's father, George Slater, was a minister at an AME church in Clinton, Iowa. And George Slater had a profound impact on his son's life, but particularly when it came to the subject of education. Uh, there was actually a story when Duke Slater was in high school. He wanted to quit school and just go ahead and get a job, start earning some money. And George Slater actually allowed Duke to quit school, but he got Duke a job uh, on the Mississippi River cutting ice in sub-zero degree temperatures. And just as George expected, it wasn't more than a day or two before Duke Slater went to his dad and said, hey dad, I'd like to go back to school. And that was a turning point in Duke Slater's career with respect to his education. And that eventually led him to the University of Iowa, to earning a law degree, and to having an outstanding legal career. You know, he played 90 games in the NFL for several teams, but he was, I believe, the first black player in the NFL his rookie year. So he, he was always you know, a trailblazer in, in that sense. Uh, and he uh, you know, became a federal judge, so he, obviously a smart man who did something beyond football after his football career. He was the first African-American lineman in the National Football League from the early 1920s to the early 1930s. Uh, the, he was the only African-American uh, lineman and the only African-American to play in the league in 1927 and 1929. So uh, uh, racism was rampant in the NFL. The owners did not want black players in the league. Duke Slater broke the mold. Uh, he knocked the door down. Duke Slater became a pioneer for black athletes at the University of Iowa and it's no exaggeration to say that Slater literally changed the complexion of the Hawkeye Athletic Department for decades to come. And then he went on to become uh, the first black judge uh, in Chicago, uh, uh, elevated to superior court. Uh, he, he, did, he did so many wonderful things for the African-American race on the field and off the field. But to me, he was a man of unquestioned integrity and professionalism and uh, so kind to people. He was, he was considered the leader of the team. And if you're a leader of a football team, your teammates have to respect you. So I, I know there was great respect for him, not only how good he was, but the way he carried himself on and off the field. The Heartland is brought to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. 
You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. Athletico Physical Therapy, it all starts here. From the snap, uh, their back just like the overplay. Uh, that was the main thing that we went over uh, during the week. So as I got the ball, I just pressed it enough to get the place high back in the overflow and I cut it back and me cutting back, I knew there was gonna be a backside backer uh, coming from the backside trying to tackle me. And then from there, it was all about breaking the arm tackle and getting upfield. On the backside there, I noticed that the receiver had a reduced tight split. So I figured that he was gonna be uh, running an over route. So I was just kind of mirroring him and he ran it a little more shallow than I thought. Uh, the quarterback kind of overthrew it a little bit. Came on, made a great uh, play, kind of coming over and uh, causing some pressure from the front side and the uh, ball landed right in my hands. I was able to get 10 yards and uh, make a play. I was kind of like the entire week we, we've been practicing that route, it was the sickle route. Um, and I, it was weird, I had a dream um, that week. I kind of manifested it. That I picked off that same route um, and then it just it happened to to come late late in the game. I knew it was eventually going to come. I just knew like there it was coming, and and we were in cover three. Bailed. Um, he took two steps to the post, and then broke out, and then I broke out. And um, quarterback never took eyes off the receiver, so it was pretty easy to read and uh, made a play on it. You know, my my touchdown kind of sealed the deal to the game. Um, we had momentum in going into that drive. At that point, I was just seeing like. Just put them away. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, they've uh, they've certainly had our number uh, for as long as I've been here, and for longer even. Uh, so it's definitely something that uh, we make a point of this week, and we know that we know that they've gotten us the past few years. And uh, so I think defensively, just kind of they have a real similar offense to uh, to Minnesota, a little bit more complex. But uh, so I think that kind of taking, taking on some of the keys that we made last week. We did well last week against Minnesota and kind of carrying that over and kind of understanding what Penn State's hurt us with in the past is going to be uh, really crucial this week. Keep preparing like the, like we have uh, in the past couple weeks. Um, we, we've been really grinding in practice. Um, and I think if we do everything that we need to do, um, and we have a good game plan uh, in place. So as long as we do what we, we, uh, we know what to do, um, and I think we can get, we can get it done. Um, this week, for sure. Just keep doing what we've uh, been doing, uh, not focus on the outside, what's, what's uh, going on in the outside world, just focus on this team and uh, what to do to become better in, uh, each and every day. This week's Heart of the Hawkeyes feature is Betty Point. A longtime Hawk fan, Betty's two fondest football memories come from two wins over Ohio State, one in 1956 and the other in 2017. Betty's love for Hawkeye football stems from her father, who was an avid listener to away games and attended every home game that he could. Betty and her husband Dick have been season ticket holders for nearly three decades, and their three daughters all graduated from the University of Iowa. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.